begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! And how you guys doing? Welcome to the show. It's Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem over on YouTube. As well as iTunes, Spotify, and all the major podcasting platforms. How you guys doing at work that's listening to us on the radio? Keep on banging it, man. Bring home that money. Today we have news on the banditos out of Australia, the outlaws and pistons out of Canada, and a whole bunch of other news going on in the scene. Uh, yeah, don't forget to go visit us at Hollywood and China Dow Show. Uh, that's our second YouTube channel. We're also on the major podcasts and platforms. See the hilarious stuff that goes on there. Poor China Dow has to deal with me on the the radio oh my goodness gracious you should have seen the 420 show last night <laughs> we got old china down high on that show baby and i busted a gut so yeah we have a lot more fun over there this is a little more serious program with uh, the biker news going on and what's going on in the country now my monologue for today you know, everybody knows I do my monologue, then we go to some biker news, then I'll give you a quick final thought on what I think about everything going on in the scene. <sighs> Yesterday, or on the previous show, you can listen to it, we were premiering a video over on the tube. And everybody chats over there, you know, it's awesome seeing everybody in the chat room. And next thing you know, I'm watching the damn chat room. And crazy, he's a guy who follows us on uh, the Madhouse as well as over on Hollywood and China Dow. Puts a legit comment down. I'm talking there's nothing wrong with it. Next thing that you know, I see the Google team retracted it. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Now, it's bad enough that on the tube... A lot of our videos, oh my god, a lot of them are throttled down because of the subject matter we cover. I'm getting 18 and older freaking things thrown at me, which means if you're not signed in over 18, you can't watch the video. Which means less uh, revenue, if you had to call it that, it's peanuts if you ask me. Uh, we don't get that. Because a lot of people have been asking, well, you're pushing the Cash App a lot now. You're pushing the PayPal, the Super Chat donation, something I didn't do before. Well, I don't take on sponsors and stuff like that. So the Cash App is dollar sign motorcycle madhouse. The PayPal is topfuelabd at gmail.com. And we're taking donations to help the show out because the platform that we're on... Now, I don't have these problems on the other platforms. It's just this one. I don't even have this problem on Facebook. But they throttled us down so much. It's like, man, you can't even get views anymore on your videos because they don't like the subject matter. And people were like, oh, I don't know. You're just freaking out. Well, they seen it firsthand in that chat room when that comment got taken down. I couldn't believe it. Right in front of everybody, this happened. And now today, the DOJ just announced an antitrust uh, suit against Google. And I'm sure that there's going to be plenty more out there that are going to join in on this lawsuit. Uh, I know a lot of states are right now. And I couldn't believe it. Democrats and Republicans are like, yeah, we need to do something now. Because this uh, monopoly is killing everybody. But with the censorship, this has just proved everything. Now, I hate getting political, but this has to do with bikers, man. You know, I know you come to this show for biker news, but this has to do with bikers. We're seeing it on my channel. I've noticed it on other channels that I've uh, been to. 
that it's happening to them. You know, our videos used to get all kinds of views. Theirs used to get all kinds of views, and now it's throttled down. Big time. So, when I, like I said, the Democrat and Republicans are behind this, and when that suit was announced this morning, which is huge, because you gotta, you know, you gotta freaking break up these tech companies. Uh, for the last four years, all we heard was Russia, 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 Russia. How they tried to interfere in our elections. Well, that was proven wrong. And I kind of find it hypocritical, like I was talking on my other uh, segment. If you're old enough to remember the Cold War, those Democrats were sucking penis, you know, across the uh, ocean, if you know what I mean. You know, they didn't want to do nothing to piss them off. But now all of a sudden it's Russia, 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 Russia. Well, what you're seeing right now is U.S.-based companies getting involved in this election. They are censoring the hell out of people. And I think we all got to see that with this story that came out against uh, the empty vessel's son. He's actually, it's a you know textbook freaking thing that they do here in Chicago. They use a straw man to get their money. Mike Madigan right now, boy, he's uh, going down, I can tell you that. Because whoop, they got ComEd to admit, yeah, we were paying them for influence. But for the tech industry to start censoring that kind of freaking story, where it's being proven hand over fist, and they're just protecting them, that's serious to this country. Not only is it serious to this country, it's serious to bikers. Because bikers have a lot of freaking influence. They have all their lobbying groups. But it only takes censorship to put out their view to ruin your cause. We've seen it with uh, Million Dollar Bogan, what Harley Davidson did to him. It's this politically correct atmosphere that is killing this country. I sat back and I was like, you know what? This country wouldn't have made it through the Cold War if this was the case the way people thought today. Back then, there's no damn way. They would have had freaking all kinds. They would have had, you know what? The last castle or the last man in the castle, something on Amazon, how it shows if we would have lost World War II, what it would have been like. That's what it would have been like in this country if we had the attitudes that we have today back then that's some scary shit man so when you see us as creators saying hey this is ha that's just like comments you know I got long time listeners that have been with me years saying hey Hollywood man you know what happened with that comment well it's not me I put every, you know, uh, yeah, the comments are held for review because I can't stand uh, all the spam from these I love you, baby, why don't you visit me, baby, crap channels. You know, uh, the foreign channels that are trying to spam the hell out of you. So we got to watch that. Because if that gets through, we get hit too. But they say, hey, Holly, well, what's going on? I was like, hey, I don't see the comment. And finally, yesterday, everybody's seen it for themselves. The Google uh, monitoring team is the one who pulled it. And all he was doing was talking about transmissions and stuffs. He put tranny down talking about transmissions. But I guess that triggers uh, the moderators over on Google. Pretty sad and scary stuff in nowadays, man. It's very scary. You got to get out there and you fight back, man, because this election, I have to say, is everybody says it every year. It's the most. No, this is uh, like he said, it's either between Americanism or socialism. You get to choose. If you're going to sit there and listen to two minute or two second sound bites and make your decision on something, you know what? Something's wrong with you. You do not know the issues and maybe you shouldn't be allowed to vote because you're too stupid and ignorant. 
The problem we're at right now in Chicago is just that. For over a hundred years, one party's been in office and it's destroyed because people cannot think for their damn selves. Sad stuff. Another story that's going to be covered here, and one I know I'm going to get pushback on, but I'll have to explain why, is Navy just, uh, I think it was discharged or punished uh, somebody for being in uh, the Thunder Guards Motorcycle Club. And I know everybody out there is going to be like, well, you know, that's BS, blah, blah, blah. But if you step back and think about it, when you get into the service, whatever one you go to, you take an oath to the Constitution of the United States. You're stating your loyalty to this country. During the time you're in the service, I believe you can only have one loyalty. And that is to the branch that you're serving in. So, I have to say I kind of agreed with this decision. Because if you have loyalty to this country, you're serving this country, you can't have any other loyalties. I, you know what, I know a lot of our people are veterans. What do you think? Do you think, say, if you're serving in the 82nd Airborne and have all that going on, that you should be allowed to join a big uh, one percenter club or some other stuff because we already know clubs take a lot of time and commitment so if you're in the service we already know that's a life that's 24 7 right there and you took an oath to the constitution of the united states which also means you follow orders you might not like them orders but you follow them because that's what you said you were going to do and if the DOJ or the Defense Department, the DOD comes out and says, hey, you can't be a part of that, well, that's an order. <laughs> that's what you uh, took an oath to do is follow orders. So uh, that's my monologue, and we're going to get into the news. And the first story up is going to be about uh, this Navy stuff going on. So let's get it on over there. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012. Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Article for those that listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that good stuff. We're going to have a special surprise for you during these podcasts. We're going to be playing a lot of music uh extending the show from where it is on our other platforms like facebook and all that stuff we cannot play that uh music that we're about to put on the podcast uh platforms on those because of copyright stuff but we can use it on uh our hosting provider so you'll get a lot longer show over there guys that way you'll listen to some music and all that good stuff so it's going to be a good time so make sure if you you're not on the podcast stuff get on over there and listen to it motorcycle madhouse is the uh show you put in there anyway navy times how running with a motorcycle gang cost the chief his anchors and this is the one I was talking about, and I might get some pushback. I might not. I might get people that agree. A lot of them disagree on my point of view on this. Like I said, I can't. I I don't think you can be loyal to two uh, different organizations. Uh, so let's get into this here. Uh, a chief culinary specialist was busted down to E6 this summer after he pleaded guilty to being a part of a criminal gang, in quotes, according to recently released Navy records. Then, Chief Culinary Specialist Dimitri S. Green, assigned to California's Naval Base Coronado, pleaded guilty in July to violating Pentagon general orders. General orders, you might not agree with them, but you took an oath to uphold them. 
quote, be wrongfully and actively participating in, in, in the Thunder Guards Motorcycle Club. Green's Navy attorney uh, declined comment via service spokesman, and Green did not respond to social media messages seeking comment. An entry for the club on the, quote, one percenter bikers website states they are, quote, an all-black outlaw motorcycle club founded in Wilmington, Delaware in 65. They have strong ties to the Pagans Motorcycle Club, according to the website. Green faced several other charges that were withdrawn as part of the plea agreement. He at one point faced an arson charge for allegedly attempting to set fire, quote, to the entry door of a urinalysis office on Naval Base Coronado on January 14th, 2019, and for using cocaine on the same date. Green's conviction follows the case of another San Diego-based Navy cook convicted for his Thunder Guards affiliation last year. Court records show. Now, another one it's talking about, there's been a lot of them uh, that have been convicted here. Now, this is in the military court, by the way. Culinary Specialist First Class Jason Thompson was sentenced in February to a bad conduct discharge. Oh, man, you don't want that. Reduction in rank to E1 in 200 days or 10 uh, days behind bars for belonging to the Thunder Guards and for cocaine distribution. Yeah, that's not up old in your oath. Club members have pleaded guilty to distributing meth and running the heroin uh, ring in recent years, according to the DOJ. The state of Delaware sued to shut down the gang's Wilmington Clubhouse in 2014, which authorities allege had been the, quote, site of at least 15 shootings, including five homicides in the past eight years. This is from the Navy Times. So, they're taking this pretty damn serious, man. Uh, and, uh, again, when you take the oath to the Constitution, when you get into the service, you're there to protect this country. Your whole freaking uh, <laughs> existence is for the service, man. So, I don't think you can freaking have loyalty to the service and then to a motorcycle club. I just don't. Maybe I'm wrong for thinking that way. I'm sure you guys will let me know. But if you got a good argument why, say, the Navy, Marines, Army, or any of that should allow people to be in a club, let me know. You got to have a good argument. Just don't be pricks on the comment section. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's see here, Maine Marine veteran honored with surprise motorcycle uh, rally. Let's take a listen. Came together to honor a local veteran suffering from terminal cancer with a special surprise this morning in Millinocket. Dozens of motorcycles cruised down Central Street to show support and celebrate the life of Bob Ham, a Vietnam Marine. Ham's family helped organize the event to surprise him. With the help of Jarhead's Motorcycle Club, they were able to organize today's rally. The community came out to show their gratitude for Ham's life and service. As a Marine, uh it's our honor. Our, our Jarheads MC is here. We've had a lot of uh, a lot of issues in our club with an accident last year. The support from the community has been tremendous. We just want to reach out and show our support to our fellow vets and to the community. That's our way of saying thank you for everything that they've done for us. This gentleman should have had this welcome when he came home from Vietnam and he didn't get it. So today we're going to extend that to him. I didn't realize that. Boy. But anyway. I didn't understand why he didn't go that way. Uh, I did not. I was totally, totally surprised. Ham served five active years as a Marine and three years in the reserves after Vietnam. And a Rock and roll, man. Uh, our Vietnam vets. You know what? That was a sad uh, decade right there. I know a lot of what we got out of the club community came from that generation. But could you imagine being drafted into the service, going over to that nightmare that was Vietnam, 
and then coming home proud as hell that you served your country and you had people swearing at you spitting on you calling you baby killer calling you a murderer I think that's one of the biggest reasons why I cannot stand leftist ideology. I think it's a danger to this country. I do not believe that they are patriotic people. I really don't. I hate to say that about anyone, but I really believe that they are not patriotic. You got a lot of kids now. A lot of kids walking around saying socialism's better than capitalism. <laughs> yeah. Tell that to the freaking ones living under it right now. That's how stupid these kids are. And it's our fault as parents. And you know, I think a lot of the problems this country has comes from the people that were around in the 60s. Your Clintons, they were out there protesting. They bring that ideology to present time and everything's screwed up. Again, I might be wrong. Present me with an argument that says I am. Let's go up north! Or not up north on this one. <laughs> My fault! Uh, Fort Lupton uh, attempted murder suspect appeared high was to join motorcycle club Trevor Reed this out of the Greenlee Tribune and we were going to have uh, a story on the banditos out in Australia we're just going to push that one to the next segment because I wanted to get all this in here so we'll have that one uh, on tomorrow's segment a Fort Lumpton man appeared to be high when he shot a relative less than two weeks ago over a money dispute. One thing I never understood is how the hell you shoot one of your own family members. I never understood it. In the afternoon of October 10th, a man was sitting near his welding truck outside his mobile home in the 7100 block of Henry Street, about four miles northeast of Fort Lumpton. A relative, a 28-year-old Colton Clark, arrived with his girlfriend in her truck, as well as two men on motorcycles, a woman in a sedan, and possibly a sixth person in an SUV, according to witnesses, not seeing the man outside. Clark went inside the home. The man later told police he constructed six security gates from mid to late September, receiving help from Clark. The man told Clark that he would pay Clark when he received payment for the work. The check came on October 10th, but he was unable to cash the check until the bank opens the following Monday. Quote, Where's my check? Clark yelled inside the house. The man called out to Clark, who pulled a handgun out of a shoulder holster and pointed it at the man's face. Lovely. According to an affidavit for Clark's arrest, as Clark pulled the trigger, the victim tried moving out of the way when he heard a loud shout, shot. The affidavit states, the man stood back up and began to th make threatening statements. One of the motorcyclists grabbed Clark and pulled him away from the gunshot victim, pushing Clark towards his girlfriend's truck. The other motorcyclist approached the victim, quote, you need to get him out of here or he's gunning die. The victim found blood coming from his head. He was taken to the emergency room at North Colorado Medical Center. It was determined he sustained minor injuries. Very lucky. A witness told police Clark was supposed to become a member of the motorcycle club called The Brotherhood. Witnesses said Clark had wide, bulgy eyes and that he appeared to be on meth. Lovely. Meth head. Witnesses said Clark received the gun as a birthday gift from his girlfriend who denied giving Clark a gun. Clark pleaded guilty uh, of uh, second degree assault and has a mandatory protection order prohibiting from owning guns. It's that kind of asshole that kills our gun rights, I can tell you that. The Weld County Sheriff's Office announced October 12th that law enforcement was looking for Clark on suspicion of attempted first degree murder second degree assault, menacing and possession of a weapon by a previous offender, 
as well as a protection order violation. He turned himself in the next day and was uh, booked into the Weld County Jail. Yeah, it's meth head assholes like that that kill our Second Amendment. Gotta love it. Now, let's go up north. Cape Brennan. Police filed more charges in alleged motorcycle gang activity by the Chronicle Herald. So, wait a second. Uh, this is Sydney. My God, am I off this morning, man? <laughs> no. Uh, it's up north. It's Nova Scotia. You always get confused with that, man. It's all this world news, man. Uh, you know, my bad. This is up north. Two people are facing firearm uh, offenses in connection with an ongoing investigation by Cape uh, Brennan Regional Police into the activities of outlaw motorcycle gangs. James Robert Osmond uh, and Jennifer Lynn, both of Ben Inn, are charged with unauthorized possession of firearms, careless use of a firearm, and possession of a weapon for a dangerous purpose. They have been released from police custody on conditions and are to appear in provincial court November 30th to enter police. Among the condition of their release, the accused are not to associate with any other members of the Outlaws or Black Pistons motorcycle groups. The pair were charged after police executed a search uh, warrant in connection with an East Bay Highway property last week. Police seized two firearms, including one that was loaded, ammunition, and clothing affiliated with outlaw motorcycle gangs. Really? I, 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 how do you guys live in Canada, man? You got such a beautiful country, such beautiful country to hunt and fish on, and you can't even have a handgun. How does that even work, man? Sad state of affairs. In September, regional police uh, made arrests in Glace Bay, resulting in charges against three individuals, including drug trafficking and weapon possession. The Glay uh, Bay arrests are also linked to the Black Pistons and Outlaw Motorcycle Gangs. Police uh, seized more than $120,000 worth of drugs, including 600 grams of pure cocaine, cannabis, resin, Ritalin, and hash. I thought it was legal up there for cannabis, man. Just asking. And they seized uh, $1,200 worth of cash right there. <sighs> I, I'm still dumbfounded. How the hell do you guys hunt and fish out there? You, can you only use shotguns, rifles? How's it work? Let me know. Let's go to my Al from Hollywood and Chinadal Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Okay, welcome back. Okay, I lied. I'm going to cover the Bandito one because a lot of people are going to probably say, Hey, false advertising. Yeah, I'm going to cover it. So, hey, uh, coming up over on the, the podcast, man, we got some Blink-182 and some Aerosmith. So, stay tuned after the show, man. Uh, one thing that you guys are going to have to realize when I am doing uh, the stuff over on YouTube and uh, Facebook, uh, it's going to be a completely different edited show over on the podcasting. You'll probably hear me say, hey, coming up is this well that's the music that's playing over there it's not going to be again because of copyright reasons i'll get my videos and all that taken down so that is what's coming up after uh this man so a man will face court today the eighth person charged by homicide squad detectives investigating the shooting murder of a senior member of Bandito's MC in the state central west earlier this year. About 10.50 a.m., and we have been covering this story. We have been. Uh, Tuesday, uh, the 14th of January, police and emergency service responded to reports a man had been shot at a property. Officers attached uh, to the Arona. Midwestern Police District attended 
and located the body of a 60-year-old man inside the home. He had suffered a gunshot wound to the head. The man has been formally identified as Bandino's MC Central West Chapter President Shane DeBritt. A crime scene was established at the property and examined by specialists uh, from the forensic office. The state's uh, crime command's homicide squad, assisted by criminal group squad and Orona Midwestern Police District detectives, commenced an investigation into the circumstances surrounding the man's death under Strike Force Carrison. So far, Strike Force detectives have arrested and charged seven people. For their alleged roles. The six men are age 58, 39, 39, 38, 37, 22, and 34 year old women remain before the courts. Following further investigation, Queens uh, Land Police arrested a 32 year old man at a truck stop at the, the Gold Coast under the authority of the NSW arrest warrant about 6 20 uh, p.m. on uh, the, tw or the 18th. So, they do got eight in total right now if you have been following that case. So, what do you guys think about my views on the Navy one? A lot of people are going to say, well, that's a freedom of association. But I truly believe, uh, again, when you give your oath to the, the service, you're giving your oath to this country. And you cannot have uh, two masters, if you will. It just don't work out that way, you know. And uh, let's be honest, you know, the one percenter clubs, they take a lot of time, man. And uh, it, it, I think it just gives critics the opportunity to say, well, see, we told you so. They got lines on ammunition and all that kind of stuff. A lot could go wrong. You know, that's going to be their argument. But my argument's the two masters, thing. Uh, as far as uh, that Vietnam vet, that was just awesome to see. I really love that kind of stuff. It's bad enough right now that our World War II uh, generation is dying out so quick, so quick. Ten years, there'll be uh, hardly any of them around. And now our Vietnam vets are going into their uh, golden years. You know, go up and shake their damn hands, man, and, and, you know, tell them thanks. Because what they had to put up with during Vietnam, that was a shame. That was a black eye on this country. Cannot believe that it happened. It was total freaking unnecessary. And a bunch of brats screaming and whining wanting to be a part of something. That, you know, that's my outlook on that. So go over there and say, you know, thank you if you can. And especially to them World War II vets, uh, it's just becoming where they're not going to be around much longer. So that is uh, Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Stay tuned after this commercial break. We're going to go to some Blink-182, baby. And boy, the show on the podcast platforms are going to be a lot different than what you're seeing over on YouTube and stuff. So make sure you take us with you to work. Listen to some good music. Listen to the biker news that's going on for today. Uh, as far as YouTube and Facebook, I'll see you guys later, man. Join me over on the radio. And make sure to listen to the Hollywood and China Dow show, baby. You'll love it. Thanks for all the donations. If you want to donate to the show, Cash App. Dollar sign motorcycle madhouse or PayPal top fuel ABD at gmail.com. Thanks for all all the donations, man. You guys are kicking ass. I love you guys to death. Uh, it's awesome to have people that uh, really support the show. I'll see you on the backdrop, man. Mm -hmm. 